Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition stop stories. The U.S. government extends assistance to select units of the RSLPF. The OECS commemorates its 40th anniversary with a flag raising ceremony. And the Division of Human Services celebrates St. Lucia's latest centenarian. Commencing the 18th of June 2021, the U.S. government will be extending assistance to select units within the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, RSLPF. The force has been excluded from receiving U.S. assistance since the imposition of the Leahy Law in 2013 due to the alleged extrajudicial killings of 12 individuals by members of the police force. The Leahy Law prohibits U.S.-funded assistance to units of foreign security forces where there is credible information implicating that unit in the commission of gross violation of human rights. U.S. Ambassador to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Linda Tagliella-Teller, speaking at a press conference on Friday, explained that the U.S. government will now be lending aid to select units within the force. After years of review that included consultations across the United States government agencies, as well as coordination with St. Lucia, we have been able to identify a number of Royal St. Lucian Police Force units with which we will be able to resume full cooperation and assistance. This means that those units, such as the Marine and Immigration units, will again be able to enjoy the full benefits of United States security assistance that we are planning to begin as we speak. These units will be eligible for security assistance like that provided through the United States Caribbean Basin Security Initiative. This initiative seeks to reduce illicit trafficking in the region, advance public safety, and promote social justice. Some St. Lucian security units may also benefit from other security assistance programs, such as the professional military educational and technical training courses provided through the United States Department of Defense, state partnership program exchanges with the Florida and U United States Virgin Island National Guards, and regular maritime maintenance support through the United States Southern Command's technical assistance and field teams. This is only the first step. We look forward to continuing to expand our cooperation and engagement. An important part of this process is to ensure full accountability on allegations of extrajudicial killings. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney welcoming the decision by the U.S. government highlighted how this extension of aid will assist security forces in St. Lucia. The Prime Minister explained that the government of St. Lucia continues to work assiduously to ensure the complete removal of the Leahy Law. Access to the Caribbean Basin Security Initiative and other programming of the U.S. government security agencies, including Southern Command, will allow for, a, amongst other things, the effective rollout of the border security agency that is being established. Fundamentally, the revision of the blanket policy that denied our law enforcement personnel access to U.S. funded training is welcomed and this is a step in the right direction. This administration will continue to provide all the support necessary to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution, which is in charge, which is charged with investigations into the allegations of wrongdoing. We're also committed to providing all the necessary support to our law enforcement professionals charged with keeping us all safe. Commissioner of Police Milton Daisy expressing gratitude to the U.S. government indicated that this support will aid immensely in the RSLPF's fight against crime. We are pleased that Your Excellency has announced the lifting of certain conditions of the lay imposition and has agreed that certain departments in the, in the force will be receiving further assistance. Commissioner of Police Milton Daisy speaking there. Meantime, the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, is celebrating four decades of advancing regional integration in the Eastern Caribbean region. As part of activities to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the original signing of the Treaty of Basté, the government of St. Lucia held its OECS flag-raising ceremony. Jesse Leos reports. 
the government of St. Lucia reaffirms its support and firm commitment to OECS integration as the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States celebrates OECS Day Friday, 18th June 2021. This year marks 40 years since the signing of the original Treaty of Bastère, which established the organization. The treaty was initially signed by seven member states, namely Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, Monstrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Since then, four associate member states have joined the organization, namely Anguilla, the British Virgin Islands, Martinique and Guadeloupe. In St. Lucia, the Regional Integration Unit in the Office of the Prime Minister coordinates and harmonizes the efforts of all sectors in order to facilitate the function of single economic space within the OECS and CARICOM as mandated by their respective treaties. The unit joins in commemoration of the 40-year regional milestone by hosting the flag-raising ceremony on OECS Day. Government Minister responsible for External Affairs, Honorable Sarah Flood Bobra, pledges St. Lucia's continued devotion to the mandate of the Treaty of Bastère. The socio-economic ravages of the COVID-19 pandemic and the ensuing struggle for vaccine procurement and equity bring into sharp focus the dangers of insularity and the power of regionalism. For four decades, the OECS has acted on the mandate to foster solidarity and facilitate the highest degree of integration possible among member states. As we celebrate OECS Day today, the government of St. Lucia reaffirms our support and firm commitment to OECS integration. Today we pay homage, we celebrate our boldness, and we celebrate our success. We hoist the OECS flag to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the establishment of the OECS. The member states of the OECS are unified through joint policy and action in several key sectors, including external transportation and civil aviation management, facilitated by the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority, external relations and overseas representation, achieved through joint representation in Brussels, Morocco, Geneva and Canada. Telecommunications, regulated by the Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Authority, currency and central banking through the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union and Central Bank, and the judiciary and administration of justice effected through the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. Chief Justice, Her Ladyship Honorable Dame Justice Janice Pereira, was on hand to deliver remarks at the flag-raising ceremony. As the third pillar of government, the judiciary of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court plays a critical role in ensuring that the social and economic fabric of those member states and territories spanning the court's jurisdiction remain protected through the rule of law. The protection of the law and equality before the law are fundamental to a well-ordered and civilized society. I have no doubt that the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court is wedded to its mandate of ensuring the observance of these precepts and will continue to support the continued growth and development of the region for many decades to come. As Chief Justice, I pray for the OECS's continued success in achieving its mandate. It cannot be overemphasized that the move towards greater integration of our region continues to present immense opportunities for growth and prosperity for the region. The flag-raising ceremony was held at the Graham Louisi Administrative Building parking lot on the waterfront Castries on 18th June 2021. Other activities in St. Lucia to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the OECS establishment include OECS Colors Day, where the public is encouraged to dress in the OECS colors that is green, dark blue, yellow and white in an effort to engender the regional identity in citizens and to encourage persons to take part in the development of regional integration. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. 
29 participants from 14 health and social agencies in St. Lucia have benefited from a PAHO WHO-sponsored virtual workshop on treating tobacco dependence. The workshop is the first component of the project, which will lead to training of additional personnel locally and a service provision to persons seeking help to quit use of tobacco products held over a two-day period. It brought together contributors from the PAHO WHO in the United States, Switzerland and the Caribbean. Regional Advisor for Tobacco Control of PAHO, Dr. Francisco Armada Perez, reiterated the rationale for the workshop. Tobacco cessation is an important component of tobacco control. Article 14 of the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control mandates each party to establish in healthcare facilities and rehabilitation centers programs for diagnosing, counseling, preventing, and treating tobacco dependence, among several other measures concerning tobacco dependency and cessation. The benefits of tobacco cessation have been amply supported by evidence, and this includes improved health in those who quit and similar gains for their families. It has been estimated that 60% of the world's 1.3 billion tobacco users have expressed a desire to quit, but only 33% have access to the tools to help them do so. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, who addressed the opening ceremony, explained how the workshop could help bridge this gap locally. This project will strengthen our capacity to assist those who need help to quit the use of tobacco. We know this process can be very challenging for those who are motivated, but nicotine addiction often thwarts the efforts of those willing to quit. This initiative adds another critical achievement in the broader tobacco control efforts of the Department of Health and other stakeholders. The WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control was unanimously adopted in 2003. St. Lucia was one of the first countries in the OECS to implement a tobacco cessation program. 182 countries have signed on to the convention, covering more than 90% of the world's population. For the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I'm Jacques Hinson Compton. The Division of Human Services celebrates St. Lucia's latest centenarian in the person of Ms. Julian Marie Maynard. Her muddy mark provides some insight into the life of Ms. Julian, 100 years strong. Birthdays often call for celebration as they signal the growth and advancement of an individual, not only in age but in life. On the extraordinary occasion of her 100th birthday, the island's latest centenarian, Julian Marie Maynard, received a special visit from the Division of Human Services. The aim was to pay homage to Julianne as she achieved a feat that many have been unable to. At a small celebration of her birthday, the Division of Human Services presented Julianne with tokens of appreciation. Andrea Alcid is a caseworker in the Elder Care Unit of the Division of Human Services. On behalf of the government and people of St. Lucia, we want to wish you... <laughs> Happy 100th birthday. We're very grateful to be celebrating this day with you. And we hope that you are happy to reach that milestone. So again, on behalf of the government and people of St. Lucia, we, look at the camera, we want to say happy birthday to you. Julianne Marie Maynard, still very much a vivacious spirit, spent most of her life catering to others as a wife, mother, and homemaker. She birthed a daughter and a son and is fortunate to see three generations, which currently consist of seven grandchildren, nine great-grandchildren, and four great-great-grandchildren. She continues to be the matriarch of the family. To the youth, she encourages them to heed the counsel of their elders. Despite her accomplishment, Julianne says she did not expect to become one of the Allen centenarians. Oh, Okay. Okay. I have six, six grandchildren, eight great grandchildren. I was always a I was always a I was 100 years. Never. 
Bom dia, Fernando de Lohane de Ordiz. Eu deixo meu agado aqui, meu. Eu tô cagado aqui, meu. Great, great, grand, all of them. So, so. No regrets. Very well. Eu não sei se 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 eu não sei the Ministry of Health and Wellness informs the public that due to the test match being held at the Darren Sami Cricket Stadium from Friday, June 18 to Tuesday, June 22, 2021, there will be no COVID-19 vaccination clinic Tuesday, June 22. Also due to the inclement weather conditions expected over the next few days, the mobile clinic scheduled for the Grosile bus terminal, the gardens on Saturday, June 19, has been postponed. The new dates will be announced in a subsequent notice. The Ministry of Health and Wellness regrets any inconveniences caused. The Department of Justice wishes to inform the public that the services offered by the Department of Justice in the Martex Building on Brazil Street, Main Office, Account Section and Legal Aid Authority will be closed on Monday 21st June 2021 and Tuesday 22nd June 2021 to facilitate the deep cleaning of the building. The Department of Justice is grateful for the public's kind cooperation and regrets any inconvenience caused. It looks forward to resuming normal service on Wednesday, 23rd June, 2021. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Creole. Point pour caution. Et fait tout ça ou ni pour faire pour sauver de l'eau. Laver bagay sal à dans un bassin de l'eau, pas quitter de l'eau à couille. Aussi, pas quitter de l'eau à couille, l'air ou kachiwe pan. Si toilet bol ou kakole, ou ni pour mettre ten en di de bak la. Toilet bol la, kakole, si ou kawe koule à de bol la avant ou flush li. Un toilet bol ki kakole, ka gaspille un chai glo. Servi un bon pito en rose pour laver motoka. Le ou ka lave had, servi de l'eau et si pour rouze fleur. Le ou sauve de l'eau, ou ka bese manye a, ou ka servi tepe ou aman. Sauve de l'eau tout le ou ni en chance. Ek chorje, tout de l'eau est pontan. Ça, c'est en commission Rodwasco. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle à Creole. Merci autant, Janel. Monsieur, Madame, Département, qui est une responsabilité pour l'information au gouvernement de celle-ci. Ça, c'est GIS, ça, c'est Télévision Nationale, pays à NTN, qui a présenté Nouvelle à Creole, présenté Primus Hutchinson. Organisation police cette ci j'ai reçu un grand soulagement à la bride que le gouvernement de l'Amérique a déposé à ce après la situation en l'année 2015, côté à peu près 12 personnes ont trouvé la moyo qui y ont accroché. Ça, c'est l'Amérique qui a accroché, ce n'est pas la police pays. Il de y a une spéciale présentation avec la conférence et les journalistes et les organisations média cette ci La société vendredi, ministre des Affaires et des Étrangères, premier ministre cette ci Chef police cette ci et ambassade des pays de l'Amérique pour ces pays caribéens là, t'es assemblé ensemble pour tenir ambassade de la fête grand à ce moment là. Ambassade Linda Schwarz Tagliela Terra annonce que le gouvernement de l'Amérique a décidé pour réduire à sous plusieurs restrictions qui ont été posées à ce police cette ci après après ont découvert action police par en façon loi pays à côté yo Et ça, c'est l'Amérique qui a créé ces policiers qui ont été responsables pour la mort de 12 hommes qui ont été engagés dans l'activité de l'activité de crime. L'ambassade américaine a annoncé qu'il a déjà décidé qu'il n'y a pas mis ces divisions de police qui ont été sorties en bas de ces restrictions, ces départements d'immigration et de police marine. Madame l'ambassade a déclaré que des départements de la police ont été recevés étonnement en façon de sécurité, étonnement militaire et de support technique. C'est leur ambassade taglia la terre gouvernement l'Amérique satisfait à présent que gouvernement cette le siège a implémenté certaines à ses recommandations que l'Amérique t'a demandé pour faire et par conséquence gouvernement américain 
soulager restriction à ce police cette ci ministre des affaires étrangères on est observé à Fort Bobre car quoi que ça qui est encore renforcé relation et puis l'Amérique et fait comprendre que même si de là la cani ils ont déjà les cassés à part mes amis je dis à ces on qui les côtés li et puis gouvernement cette ci et aussi citoyen pays très appréciable qui relation des affaires sécurité qui arrive en en accord à cette ci et puis l'Amérique chef police Milton Desi déclaré ça a porté autant bénéfice pour aider ou réduire à ce crime contre le trafic de drogue, ferment et renforcer l'opération police marine. Le Premier ministre de cette honorable Alain Chasney, a applaudi le développement de ça et a mentionné ces plaisirs actions que le gouvernement a pris pour établir plus forte sécurité en pays à Magoué, ces restrictions salariales là et que cette maladie corona. Le Premier ministre a bienvenu la nouvelle ça et que, à présent, plus qu'il ça fait toujours pour abattre le crime et pour établir plus fort coopération et puis le gouvernement de l'Amérique, particulièrement en affaires de sécurité. Il y a un programme pour encourager les jeunes garçons qui étudient à l'école secondaire pour embrasser la route qui est positive à la vie, ce qui a apporté le nom à Boys Matter, qui a commencé à faire progrès pour l'année ici, 2021. Ces jeunes garçons étudiants ont expérimenté un bon support pour des organisations qui acceptent leur responsabilité pour participer à des programmes pour aider à guider ces jeunes gens là en une meilleure direction. Agence là qui est responsable pour faciliter le programme là et aussi responsable pour le développement du programme social à cette ici, ça c'est SSDF, a annoncé des voyants sur le monde récemment pour ces garçons là et c'était un monapique pour monter pour te trouver une organisation à pays qui est d'accord pour aider le développement de ces jeunes garçons étudiants là. Mais à la fin, il y a une organisation religieuse qui a apporté nos Brotherhood of St. Andrew, volontaire pour assister SSDF, dit que ce réseau qui fait était possible pour le programme de la point août. Le directeur exécutif pour SSDF, Dr. Alison Mathre, fait comprendre qu'il n'a pas jamais ni assez de pour les jeunes filles qui parlent pour trouver assistance. Et Jid, Dr. Mathre, dit que la situation est tellement difficile pour trouver de pour les jeunes garçons. Il peut être nécessaire pour embrasser ces jeunes filles en bas du programme ça là aussi. Le directeur a dit que c'est parce que les jeunes garçons n'ont pas trouvé de grands supports et d'assistance qui ont mérité en résultat des absences qu'ils n'ont pas à la vie pour faire une bonne direction. Il dit que c'est pour eux qu'ils apprécient autant la décision de l'organisation Brotherhood, Brotherhood of St. Andrew qui a venu devant pour assister. Le chef officier d'éducation en département d'éducation, c'est le docteur Fiona Philip Mayer, conseiller ces jeunes garçons c'est étudiant à l'école secondaire pour respecter ces membres organisations ça là et pour faire un gros effort pour montrer gratitude pour assistance que organisation ça là ca baio et pour participer à ces activités qui ca à bénéficier et faire ces jeunes gens comprendre ça c'est temps qui pas paio te supposé te catcher et puis yo pour observer le 40e anniversaire agrément de Bastère à Saint-Kitts, le gouvernement s'est aussi tenu une cérémonie vendredi matin, le 18 juin, devant la Cour Biroy, un établissement Graham Luzi, qui est situé devant la Gouan-Lawad Castri. La cérémonie, c'était pour renforcer le commitement du gouvernement s'est aussi pour l'unification de ce type de pays. Le gouvernement s'est aussi tenu la possibilité de l'unification de ce pays, qui est trouvé ici par sept membres. Ça, c'est Antigua et Babiuda, Dominique, la Grenade, Montserrat, Saint-Kitts-Saknevis, c'est le 6 et avec la Grenadien. Le département qui est responsable pour l'unification régionale, en bureau au premier ministre, a organisé une grande affaire ça, pour ça faciliter l'opération unification ça, là, pour ces types et aussi CARICOM. Le ministre des Affaires et des Étrangères pour mettre le commitment au gouvernement cette ci pour suivre ces arguments de Bastet, ça là. C'est même là qu'il a collaboré à plusieurs actions, et bien il a collaboré à plusieurs actions, et que, par exemple, transportation, à ma mise pays, à service à avion, représentation à l'autre gros pays. Chef juge pour plus haut service l'audience pour ce pays, c'est honorable Janice Pereira, qui a délivré un grand adresse là pour cérémonie à côté de cette liste. Rossé doit pour pour ce pays, car là, en observance 40 l'année en existence. Le gouvernement est encouragé. PPA pour te habiller en couleur organisation, ça c'est couleur vert, bleu, jaune et blanc. Et c'est pour ça que nous avons une nouvelle là. Je vais vous donner un temps pour vous regarder, pour vous donner une invitation. Pour que je puisse vous considérer, conserver la vie. Nous allons passer à l'autre nouvelle à Coyol. Je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon finissement de semaine. Et ça c'est le bon vieux pour vous donner un temps.
Mesiapil Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norvell.